Have you ever wondered how the SS, one of the most feared organizations in history, came into being? The year was 1925 and a man named Adolf Hitler, the leader of the budding Nazi party, felt the need for a personal bodyguard unit. This need gave birth to the Schutzstaffel, or SS, a group initially committed to the sole purpose of protecting Hitler. As the years rolled on, another figure emerged from the shadows, a man named Heinrich Himmler. Himmler, ambitious and ruthless, saw more than just a bodyguard unit in the SS. He envisioned a force that would not only protect Hitler, but also embody the ideologies of the Nazi party and prove instrumental in its plans. This marked the beginning of the SS's transformation, a metamorphosis steered by Himmler's vision. Thus began the birth of a unit that would evolve into an organization that played a pivotal role in one of the darkest periods of human history. As the SS grew, so did its power and influence within the Nazi party. By the year 1934, the SS had carved out a distinct identity, distinguishing itself from the SA, the Storm Detachment, which was the original paramilitary wing of the Nazi party. The SS emerged as an elite group, loyal only to Hitler, becoming a symbol of the Nazi vision of racial purity and supremacy. With its members hand-picked for their Aryan appearances and ideological commitment, the SS was seen as the epitome of the Nazi racial state. Its black uniforms, death's head insignia, and strict discipline made them a fearsome sight, designed to both inspire awe and instill fear. Their loyalty to Hitler was unswerving, their obedience unquestioning. They were the executioners of Hitler's vision, a vision that would lead to some of the darkest chapters in human history. In less than a decade, the SS had transformed from a simple bodyguard unit to a formidable force within Nazi Germany. The SS's rise wasn't without bloodshed. The Night of the Long Knives, a chilling name for a chilling event, marked a turning point in the early years of the Third Reich. This was a bloody purge within the Nazi ranks, a brutal power play orchestrated by Hitler and the SS. The primary targets? The leadership of the SA, the paramilitary organization that had helped Hitler rise to power. But Hitler perceived the SA's independence as a threat, and the SS was more than willing to prove its loyalty. In one swift violent move, the SS eliminated the SA's top leadership. This was more than just a purge, it was a transformation. The SS began to consolidate its power, morphing from an elite bodyguard unit into a dominant force within Nazi Germany. The SS had officially arrived, and it was here to stay. The SS wasn't just a military organization, it was also a social engineer. The Race and Settlement Office, or Rusha, played a pivotal role in this. Established in 1931, Rusha was tasked with preserving the supposed racial purity of the SS. It wasn't just about who could join the SS, but also who they could marry and how they should raise their families. Marriage wasn't just a personal affair anymore. It was a matter of state, a matter of ideology. Prospective spouses had to prove their Aryan ancestry going back at least two centuries. The offspring of these unions were expected to be the model citizens of Hitler's dream Aryan society. The Rusha also ran the Lebensborn program, providing support for racially pure single mothers and overseeing the adoption of racially valuable children. Under the SS, personal life was no longer personal, but a matter of state and ideology. The SS had its eyes and ears everywhere. This was largely due to the Sicherheitsdienst, or SD, the intelligence arm of the SS and the Nazi party. The SD was much more than a spy network. It was a tool for political policing, keeping tabs on potential dissidents and ensuring loyalty to the Nazi cause. Its agents were everywhere, blending into society, and their reports shaped the actions of the SS. But the SD's role was not limited to domestic affairs. It was also deeply involved in espionage, gathering information from foreign powers to bolster the Nazi war effort. Most chillingly, the SD played a crucial role in orchestrating the Holocaust. It coordinated the identification, arrest, and deportation of millions of Jews to extermination camps, making it a key player in this horrific genocide. The SD was the shadowy hand guiding the SS, shaping its actions and directing its force. The SS wasn't just about ideology, it was also about action. The Waffen-SS was the armed wing of the SS, fighting alongside the regular army yet under SS command. This unit was not just about brute force, it was a manifestation of the SS's ideals of loyalty, bravery, and racial purity. It was the SS in action, 
a fearsome force on the battlefield that struck terror into the hearts of its enemies. Its soldiers were chosen for their physical prowess, fanatical loyalty, and adherence to the Nazi racial ideology. They were trained to be ruthless, efficient, and unswerving in their duty, reflecting the SS's vision of an elite fighting force. Despite the horrific context of their actions, there's no denying the Waffen-SS's military effectiveness. But at what cost? The Waffen-SS was the SS in action, a fearsome force on the battlefield. The SS's reach wasn't limited to Germany. As the flames of World War II fanned across Europe, so too did the influence of the Waffen-SS. This arm of the SS was not just a German force, it was a multinational entity. Tens of thousands of volunteers from outside Germany's borders were drawn into its ranks. These were men who, for reasons as diverse as the countries they hailed from, chose to align themselves with the Nazi cause. Some were ideologically akin to the Nazis, others saw it as a way to fight against the spread of communism, and some were simply seeking a better life. These foreign units, fighting under the Nazi banner, were the embodiment of the SS's attempt to create a pan-European front. The SS was becoming a global phenomenon, a chilling testament to the reach of its ideology. The SS was responsible for some of the darkest chapters in human history. The criminal division, a grim and brutal sector of this organization, bore the chilling responsibility of administering concentration and extermination camps. These camps, scattered across Nazi-occupied Europe, were the horrific epicenter of the SS's murderous agenda. Here, SS officers, devoid of empathy or remorse, became the executors of the Holocaust, a genocide that saw the systematic annihilation of six million Jews. But the SS's brutality was not confined to Jews alone. Roma, political dissidents, homosexuals and other groups deemed undesirable by the Nazi ideology were also victims of this relentless killing machine. The criminal division of the SS didn't just manage these camps, they were the embodiment of the camps themselves cold, ruthless, and deadly. This was the SS at its most horrific, a machine of death and destruction. All things come to an end, and the SS was no exception. As the Third Reich crumbled under the weight of Allied forces, the once feared SS found itself on the brink of extinction. The end of World War II saw many of its leaders captured, facing justice for their crimes against humanity in the Nuremberg Trials. The world watched as men like Heinrich Himmler, Reinhard Heydrich, and many others were held accountable for their actions. The trials were more than a reckoning, they were a stark exposure of the atrocities committed by the SS, shedding light on the depths of human cruelty. The SS, once the epitome of Nazi power and ideology was declared a criminal organization, its dark deeds forever etched in the annals of history. The SS's legacy is a stark reminder of the horrors that can occur when power and ideology go unchecked. As we reflect on the history of the SS, we are reminded of the importance of vigilance against hate and totalitarianism. From its inception as a personal guard unit to its evolution into a powerful, feared entity responsible for unimaginable atrocities, the SS's history is a chilling testament to the dark potential of unchecked power and ideology. Let us remember the past to ensure such horrors are never repeated. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the SS's history. Let's never forget the lessons it teaches us.